How's it going, Savage Life family? Today we're going to be talking about what will happen when Ethereum transitions over to ETH 2.0, how this will affect Ethereum and other coins connected to it, and simply try to break it down the most simplest, quickest way as possible. Now looking at Ethereum, it is up in price $2,300 as more and more ETH is transferred over to the ETH 2.0 staking pool. They will create a supply issue driving demand up for ETH, which is currently what we're seeing here, why ETH is outperforming the overall market. Now let's go ahead and hop into it. As of today, Ethereum works on ET hash algorithm and proof of work mechanism. The idea of proof of work is to unite equipment into a decentralized network for performing computational tasks and mining blocks to blockchain. The incentive of doing so is earning ETH for validating blocks. Now the issues with proof of work lie on the scalability of the network. Because ETH is currently a proof of work chain, as proof of work requires a lot of work in the form of computations, their blocks can only be created every 15 seconds to 10 minutes. The system does not cope with the flow of users. There's a large queue of transactions and serious delays in the network. This makes proof of work computationally unscalable compared to proof of stake. With Ethereum 1.0 or the regular Ethereum that you're seeing currently, the network can only support around 30 transactions per second. This causes delays and major congestion of what you're currently seeing on the Ethereum blockchain. Ethereum 2.0 promises up to 100,000 transactions per second, which will make the blockchain much less congested and allow a lot of the DeFi applications to move smoothly now with proof of work comes high security they are the most secured consensus algorithm out there and with high security comes a heavy cost the ever increasing computing power of the nodes require even more electrical energy what does that mean when miners mine and validate a blockchain each block that is validated increases the difficulty of the next block that is mined and with the higher increase in difficulty will cause much more energy usage in order to solve that computation. Now with the significant growth in ETH there has been a significant growth as well in mining costs. Against the backdrop of demand, the price of ASICs and additional equipment has increased. The cost of electricity increases year by year as well. And as a result, the profit of miners is currently decreasing. Now, after switching to proof of stake, the miners get another name, validators. The higher the amount of money in the user's account, the bigger reward he can get. Therefore, Validator cannot afford to spend his ETH. It turns out that the profit directly depends on the amount of money in the account. So the volume of ETH in circulation will fall, possibly causing it to become much less volatile. Whether if you think that's a good or bad thing, it's all on your perspective. Now, let's talk about staking. And what's to come? Staking is a way to use your crypto holdings, in this case ETH, to earn additional rewards. By staking, you allow your crypto to be used as a part of the blockchain validation process and are rewarded by the network for the use of your assets. So in a way, it's like leaving your money in a bank. You're earning interest while the money is sitting in the bank, but the bank is using your money to loan to other people at higher interest rates and make money that way now the larger the amount of stake and the longer the duration of the stake the better are the chances of the staker to get transaction validation responsibility in order to become an ETH validator you need at least 32 ETH and if you don't have that you can stake for less if you join a staking pool for an example a lot of you guys have asked me how are you able to stake and if i could make an example of staking eth and here on stakewise.io you simply make an account connect your wallet deposit it and you'd send it to the staking pool 
which they will go ahead and stake your ETH for you at a 5.88 APR annual rate. So as the time goes on, keep in mind that this annual rate is going to drop because when they first started the sharding process and the ETH transitioning from ETH to ETH 2.0, 524,000 ETH were being staked at a 21% APR but as you can see as more and more ETH are staked we can see a lower and lower APR and currently we're at this 6.3 APR rate of course if you're staking into a pool they're gonna give you less APR than if you were staking by yourself so keep that in mind now since there is no need for mining to solve complex puzzles the energy concerns diminishes as the transactions are validated by those staked coins so the media will have absolutely nothing to say about ETH in the sense of energy concerns this is going to increase energy efficiency by 99 percent switching over to proof of stake but there is several issues moving over to proof of stake and we'll be talking about the centralization issue now it appears when rich miners or validators are allowed to mine virtual coins like i said the more coins you have for staking the more coins you will earn as a result there are risks or even greater centralization and 90 percent of users could possibly lose the ability to produce ethereum because the rich will only get richer to combat this though ethereum 2.0 requires a minimum of 16,384 validators making it much more decentralized and hence secure so time will only tell if this will prevent that from happening currently ether holders have staked more than 13 billion worth of eth on the eth 2.0 network as excitement builds around the overhaul of the system and the potential growth of the staking industry more than 190,000 validators have connected as of monday so it seems excitement is building and more and more people are staking their coins as they see ethereum as a very long-term play you'd only want to stake your coins if you're in it for the long haul because you won't really earn interest by the week it's an apr rate now after the merger miners have two easy choices it looks like it's going to be a mix between ethereum classic which is my number one pick currently and Ravencoin. Neither are as well known or widely used as the Ethereum blockchain. And as you all know, Ethereum Classic does have that misinformation out there about the 51% attacks. If you're not informed on that, I'm gonna leave a link in the description showing you the breakdown of what truly happened behind the 51% attacks on Ethereum Classic. Now that doesn't matter. What matters is that like Ethereum, their tokens can be mined with rigs that use graphics processing units. So these miners are going to want to mine a coin that's going to bring them profits regardless of how widely known it is. Because over time, a majority of these coins are going to be profitable and successful in the future. Now, there's currently two phases, or people like to say there's four phases, but I'll break it down into two simple phases for the ETH transition to 2.0. Now, phase one introduces the beacon chain. The beacon chain is essentially a new proof of stake blockchain that Ethereum's current chain will eventually merge with. The beacon chain is what you currently see. It introduces proof of stake and sets up Ethereum up for staking. And it's sort of a test net for the future proof of stake version of Ethereum. That's where people are sending their Ethereums over to to be staked. Now the second phase is called the merge. And the merge represents the official switch to the proof of stake consensus model where the existing network will merge with the beacon chain. And this is expected to take place sometime in late 2021 or early 2022. So it's just around the corner and you can see why it'd be a terrible choice to either sell off your ETH or your ETC currently because this is gonna be a major catalyst for both coins. So there you have it for the breakdown. If you guys have any questions, drop it down below in the comment sections. 
Smash that like if you enjoyed this update and subscribe for more. I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.